Hello folks, today I am going after the Wizard Nebula, and I've done this before, but I only captured around, I think between four or five hours of it with my SET, so I'm going to go for more hours with this new refractor and see how it comes out, and uh, probably only this first day I'll be working on HA, and then I'll uh, capture oxygen and sulfur on another day. And the mean readout right now is 575, uh, which is not bad because it, there's haze here. It's very spotty outside. Right now, I think I'm pointing to the only clear spot in the sky. And if I get hit with that haze, my ADU, the mean readout here, is going to go way up. So let's take a look at one raw image so far. That's pretty much what I expected it to look like. Uh, it comes in pretty strong with a single raw image, so I'm, I'm this is going to look good if I can capture around four hours of data in, in HA at least. Yeah, let's take a look at my guiding really quick. Uh, 0.74, let's clear it out, Get clear out that dithering that's been going on. Um, 0.48. 0 0.44, 0 0.53, 0 0.48. Yeah, that's not bad. If they can stay in that range, I expect the guiding to be pretty good when I'm pointing to the north again. So, okay, I'll see you later. Okay, after a second night of capturing data on the Wizard Nebula, I now have 10 hours worth of data. But before I show you everything, I wanted to show you the top pick section on Astrobin. And I mentioned the other day how my... A picture of NGC 7822 made it into the top pick section. And now uh, it appears my Cygnus wall has made it into that section. So I've got two pictures sitting in there right now. That means I've got two chances at being image of the day. And, and I think i got about eight or nine days to see whether they make, make it to that point or not. But anyway, I mean, I didn't get into this hobby so I could be image of the day on somebody else's website. I didn't even know this kind of thing existed. But I, I still think it's kind of cool. I think, I mean, maybe I've made a little bit of progress in what I'm doing here. So it'd be nice to have at least one image of the day, you know. So anyway, uh, back to uh, the Wizard Nebula. Oh, by the way, that's my new wallpaper. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. So for the Wizard Nebula, I, I captured four hours of hydrogen, um, three hours of oxygen, which it shows up pretty well here, and uh, three hours of sulfur. So uh, that's what I've got. Uh, I was happy to see that I've got a lot of oxygen and a lot of um, sulfur. So, like I say, when you get data with all three filters, it, it's not that difficult to process. And this time, they, they I, I had enough data where I didn't have to struggle too much with the image. And let me show you how it turned out after I did my processing. And uh, that's my Wizard Nebula. Now, I captured this image about... Uh, four months ago with my SET and I thought, you know, maybe I should do it again and, you know, I've probably learned a few things since then and that's how it came out with my SET and uh, at the time I thought that was really good but uh, maybe my processing wasn't that great back then and let me rotate this here so we can see it side by side because I, I think I, I much prefer my new one <laughs> over the old one. I don't know. What do you think? I, I think the one, my new one here on the left looks a lot more natural. Um, but I think the background looks more natural. The I, I like how the colors turned out here, even though, you know, the Hubble palette is false color. I still like how it turned out over this one. So, um, anyway, that's that's how the wizard turned out. And let me show you one more thing. I captured HA on the California Nebula a few days ago, and I added, decided to add a, 
a couple hours worth of oxygen to it. And that's what my California Nebula looks like. It, it's obviously too big of a target for that new t new refractor I'm using, but yeah, it's still kind of cool. I'll probably capture it again with my wide field scope. Okay, well, that's all I got. Thanks for listening. I'll see you later.